Lesson 27 homework. Number one, divide. Check your work with multiplication. So seven divided by 28. So we have seven divided by 28. Now, 28 can't go into seven. I'm gonna put a zero there. And then since we haven't gotten anywhere, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this seven and zero tenths and bring the decimal point straight up. So it's also in my quotient and figure out how many times 28 can go into 70. So I think it could go in maybe two or three times. So let's try three. 28 times three. That's gonna be too big. It's 84. So let's try 28 times two is 56. So it can go in two times. If we subtract, we get 14. And I'm going to, since we still have a remainder, I'm going to add another zero and bring that down. So how many times can 28 go into 140? So 28, let's see, 28 times 3 was 84, so let's try times 6. 6 times 8 is 48, 6 times 2 is 12, plus 4 is... 16, so that's too big. Let's try six, 28 times 5. It's 40 and 14. So that works. So it can go in 5 times. 5 times 28 is 140. No remainder. So we get 25 hundredths as our quotient. So now let's multiply to check. We're going to do 25 hundredths times 28 and see if we get 7. So 8 times 5 is 40, carry the 4. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 4 is 20. Put our 0 down. Done with the 8, on to the tens place. 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Add it all together, and we get 700. But I really had multiplied this by 100 to make it 25, so I need to divide by 100, and I'll end up with... 7 and 0 hundredths, which is 7. Okay, B. 51 divided by 25. So 25 can't go into 5, but it can go into 50 twice. 2 times 25 is 50. We get 1 as a remainder, but we want a decimal. So I'm going to keep this going by making it in 0 tenths bring my decimal point straight up, and then bring down the zero. 25 can't go into 10, so I'm gonna add another zero. And put a zero over there. 25 could go into 100 four times. Four times 25 is 100, no remainder. So we get two and four hundredths. Now let's multiply to make sure that is correct. I'm gonna do two and four hundredths times 25. So 5 times 4 is 20. Carry the 2. 5 times 0 is 0 plus 2 is 2. And 5 times 2 is 10. And get rid of what I carried. On to the 2. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 2 is 4. Add it together. We get 5,100, but we need to divide that by 100. Since here we had multiplied by 100, just looking at it, 204. So we get 51 and 0 hundredths, which is the same as 51. And C, 6 and 5 tenths divided by 13. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring my decimal point straight up into my answer. And I'm just going to look at this as 13 divided by 65. So 13 can't go into 6, but it could go into 65. I'm going to try, let's see, maybe 5? Let's try 13 times 5. That's too big. Oh, wait, I think I did that wrong. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6, so it is 65. So it can go in exactly 5 times. No remainder, so it's just 5 tenths. And 
let's multiply to make sure that that is correct. So let's do 5 tenths times 13. 5 times 3 is 15. Put our 0 down. 1 times 5 is 5. Add it together. And here, since we'd multiplied by 10, looking at it as just 5, we need to divide by 10, which would give us 6 and 5 tenths, which is what we started with. 132 and 16 tenths divided by 16. So 16 can't go into 1, it can't go into 13. I'm going to bring my decimal point up before I forget. It could go into 132. Let's see, times 10 would be 160. So let's try maybe times 8. Or 28 yep that's as close as we can get we'll have 4 and bring down the 1 how many times can 16 go into 41 let's say 2 because 16 times 2 is 32 so it can go in 2 times how many times can 16 go into 96 let's try 16 times 6 6 times 6 is 36. Yep, exactly, 6 times. So we get 8 and 26 hundredths as our quotient. And if we want to multiply to check, we will do 8 and 26 hundredths times 16. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 3 is 15. 6 times 8 is 48, plus 1 is 49. Put our 0 down. Forget that we carried those. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 8 is 8. Add it together. We get 13,216, but we need to divide by 100 because we've multiplied by 100 here. And we'll get 132 and 16 hundredths, which matches. All right, 561 and 68 hundredths divided by 28. 28, bring my decimal point straight up. 28 can't go into five, could go into 56, maybe twice. Yep. And I will bring down the one. 28 can't go into one. I'll put a zero there. And then bring down the six. 28 can't go into 16. So put a zero up there. Bring down the eight. 28 could go into 168. Let's try 28 times 5. That's a little small. Let's add a 28 and see what we get. 168. Okay, so we could go in the 5 plus one more would be 6 times. Was well, 168. Subtract, we have nothing left. So 20 and 6 hundredths. Now let's multiply and see if we get that same answer. So 20 and 6 hundredths times 28. 8 times 6 is 48. 8 times 0 is 0, plus 4 is 4. 8 times 0 is 0, and 8 times 2 is 16. Forget we carried that. On to the 2. 2 times 6 is 12, carry the 1. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1. 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 2 is 4. If we add everything together, we get 56,168, but we need to divide it by 100 so we can get back what we had multiplied, and we get 561 and 68 hundredths. That is a match. All right, last one, 604 and 8 
tenths divided by 36. So bring the decimal point straight up. 36 can't go into 6. It could go into 60 just once. If we subtract, 10 minus 6 is 4, 5 minus 3 is 2, and we'll bring down the 4. So 36 could go into 244. I'm going to guess about maybe 6, 7, or 8 times. So let's try with, let's try 6. 36 times 6. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 3 is 21. 216, let's see if it could go in again. be 252, so that's too big. So it goes in 6 times, which was 216. If we subtract, we get 28, and I'll bring down the 8. So we have 7 times here is 252, so let's add another 36 and see if we get to 288. And we do, so we can go in here with six, seven, eight times. Eight times 36 is 288. No remainder, so we get 16 and 8 tenths. Let's multiply, make sure that is correct. So 16 and 8 tenths times 36. Forget what we carried onto the three. Add it together. We get 6,048, but I need to divide that by 10 because I had multiplied this by 10 to make it 168, and we'll get 604 and 8 tenths, which is what we wanted. Okay, number two. In science class, students water a plant with the same amount of water each day for 28 consecutive days. If the students use a total of 23 and 8 tenths liters of water over the 28 days, how many liters of water did they use each day? How many milliliters did they use each day? So let's start by finding how many liters. So they used 23 and 8 tenths liters over 28 days. So we're going to do 23 and 8 tenths divided by... 28. And I'll bring my decimal point straight up. 28 can't go into 2, it can't go into 23, it could go into 238. Let's try 7 times. One hundred ninety-six. let's see what 8 times would be. So it can go in eight times. We get 14. Now we're not done. We want to keep going. So I'm going to add a zero and then bring it down. How many times can 28 go into 140? Let's try... Uh, five. 8 times 5 is 40, 5 times 2 is 10, okay, so it can go in 5 times, no remainder, so we get 85 hundredths liters, and then it wants to know how many milliliters they used each day, well there's 1,000 milliliters in 1 liter, so in 85 hundredths liters, we would need to do 1,000 times 85 hundredths, and that means that the digits are going to shift three places to the left. So we would get 850 milliliters. Number three. 
Number three, a seamstress has a piece of cloth that is three yards long. If she cuts it into shorter lengths of 16 inches each, how many of the, shor- how many of the shorter pieces can she cut? So she has three yards we're cutting into inches. So I think the first step we need to do is change three yards into inches. There's 36 inches in one yard. So in three yards, we would need to do 36 times three and 36 times three is 108. So she has 108 inches. Let's remember that. And she's cutting it into lengths of 16 inches. Let's do 108 divided by 16. 16 can't go into one, it can't go into 10. It could go into 108. Let's see, let's try seven times. That's too big, so it could go in six times probably. Yes, 96. We subtract and get 12. Now we don't want that remainder, so I'm going to add a decimal point and some zeros so that I can bring those down eventually. And I'll bring my decimal point straight up and then add a zero. So 16 could go into 120. We already did that problem, so I'm gonna use what we already have here. 112 was seven times. And we still have a remainder, so we need to keep going. How many times can 16 go into 80? Um, I'm gonna try 16 times five, because 16 times six was 96. Six times five is 30. That is 80. So it can go in five times and no remainder. So we get six and 75 hundredths inches. And finally, number four, Jenny filled 12 pitchers with an equal amount of lemonade in each. The total amount of lemonade in the 12 pitchers was 41 and four tenths liters. How many liters of lemonade would be in seven pitchers? So first, we know that 12 pitchers is, four, not 14, 41 and 4 tenths liters. So we need to know how many pitchers, we want to know how many liters would be in seven pitchers. So let's figure out how many liters are in just one pitcher. And to do that, we're gonna do 41 and 4 tenths divided by 12. Bring my decimal point up. It can't go into four, it can go into 12 three times. Minus 36 would be five and bring down the four. 12 can go into 54. Let's try We know 12 times 4 is 48, so it can only go in four times. If we subtract 54 minus 48, we get 6. And I'm going to add a 0 and keep going. 12 can go into 65 times. So there is 3 and 45 hundredths liters in one pitcher. So we need to know how many could be in seven. We're gonna multiply three and 45 hundredths times seven. Seven times five is 35. Seven times four is 28, plus three is 31. Seven times three is 21, plus three is 24. And then we had multiplied this by 100, assuming it was 345, so now we need to divide by 100, and we'll get 24 and 15 hundredths liters.